Okay, today in Ed's little how-to world, how to fix things, we're going to go old school. I like old school. I love Nintendo, I love Game Boy. As you can see, I've got several cartridges from the old systems. This is the old NES system. This is my Nintendo 64. And these are cartridge games for my Game Boy, my color Game Boy. The problem that I'm having is, is I am finding these in thrift stores everywhere. But 90% of them do not work. I'm going to show you real quick how to get them back on track and working again. Got my handy dandy little Game Boy here. I have a pencil, which I will show you what to do with. It's just a little plain old Phillips screwdriver. And this is something you're going to have to spend a little money to get. It's a security screw kit. These are special bits for the security screws that they use in these games. I'm going to try to show you on the back of one of these. I've taken this one out. It goes right there where my thumb is. Yeah. This one has it in. I, I don't think I can show it too well without it going out of focus. But it's like a little star screw. This regular screwdriver isn't going to work. You can try to go in there with a pair of needle nose and try to grab it and try to twist it, but you're going to destroy the casing and then it won't slide into the game properly. My suggestion is going to be go to Harbor Freight, spend a couple of bucks and get yourself a security screwdriver bit kit. Okay, I have got a Dremel with just a very fine little brush on here. This is extreme. This is if the game just will not work with what I'm going to show you. And everybody should go out to Radio Shack and get yourself a can of handy dandy electronics cleaner. You can actually spray this into the Game Boy to get it working, but just don't have it turned on. I'm working on a towel. I don't recommend this. I recommend that you also spend a couple of bucks at Harbor Freight and get a static mat, put on a static wrist wristband, and tie it to ground somewhere because there are chips inside these and you can damage them with static electricity. The first thing you're going to have to do is find your magic bit that goes into the screw that's in this. Now, so far I've seen that the Game Boy, the 64, and the NES use the same kind of screws. It's a little bit of a star screw, and you're going to use one of these star bits. It's hard to see, but it's shaped like the screw, and it slides in. To save a little bit of time, I went on ahead and took this one out. Now, the Game Boy is particular. Don't try to rip the thing up once you take the screw off. It's a slide down, pop off. Once you take the cover off, you're going to see the circuit board. This is what I meant about the chips. You can damage these if you're rubbing on, on a rug or if you're walking across the room and you touch it. One little static discharge, this puppy is gone for good. This is what I'm concerned with, these teeth. You can't see it, but I can see it pretty good from where I'm at. There's some green corrosion on it, and you can see that from years of this game going in and out of the cartridge, it, there's some scratches and whatnot. I'm going to put the cover back on to show you that I got this. I'm just putting the game in, turning it on. You see it comes up and says Game Boy. And that's pretty much all it's going to do. Okay, So I take the game out, pop the cartridge out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open her up. Remember, I should be wearing a static band, but I just can't find mine. Take the circuit board out. What you're going to do as first step, first stage, is just take a regular old pencil with a very good eraser on it and just go across the terminals here with an eraser. The eraser will remove pretty much all the green gunk, any type of minor corrosion that's on there. And when you're all done, give it a good blow, get all that dirt out of there. Look at those contacts, and they should you see that they started to shine up pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Put the circuit board back in where it belongs. Make sure you don't put it in backwards. It won't fit anyway, but go ahead and close the cartridge. Put the game cartridge back in the game. Give it a try. And there we go. Cartridge is working again. That was, like I said, out of all the games that I've purchased that do not work, 80% of the time, 
that's all I have to do to them. Sometimes I have gotten some where the contacts are just so corroded that that will not do it. If that is the case, and I'm only suggesting this as a last resort, go ahead and get yourself a Dremel. Like I said, a fine little brush on there. Don't go high speed. Let's get it. No, just this one's a very, very small one. It's DC powered. It's not very harmful. I mean, you can actually touch your hand with it and it's not going to hurt you. Turn it on very, very lightly. Go across the tunnels. Okay. And when you're done, just give it a, an inspection and see that it's all nice and gold and shiny. Okay, and then just go ahead and put your game back together again. Put the cover on it. Show you that there's no damage to it. Oh, you know what? I just bumped my batteries. Hang on. This one. A little bit of help here. And you can see that it's working. Comes up. There's my model. So the game is fine. These, and this is my absolute favorite game, Doom, found it for the N64, did not work at all. It is totally dead. I haven't even tried it again. I took the two screws out to save a little bit of time. When you open the 64 games up, right, you're going to find that there is a, the circuit board sits in here, and there is a shield that sits on top of them, and that shield will have two Phillips screws on the ends. Just take those out with a standard screwdriver, remove the shield, and there you're going to find the circuit board with the chips on it, the ROM chip that holds the game. Remove that, there's going to be another shield on the bottom. Sometimes you're going to find that there's corrosion on the shield. Just take a little bit of SO, uh, uh, the steel wool pads and give it a little buffing. Don't go crazy with the Dremel unless you absolutely have to. This one you're going to find that there's also a little bit of piece of plastic on there that has to go back on there because that's what separates everything when it goes into the game cartridge. Okay, This one I've already cleaned up a little bit but it still had some massive greenness going on. A lot of patina which is really really dirty so I'm going to go ahead and give this one a good shot with the dermal. And when you're done, flip it over, because there's more on the back. Don't just think, oh, I'm done yet. Yeah, no, get the ones on the back as well. Okay. Very, very important when you're using the Dremel, don't force it in there. This steel, still the, the bristles on this brush right here, if they do get in there, it will break the trace. If it does that, throw it away. You're not going to be able to fix it. Very, very lightly, just go across, you know, like this. Or if you wanted to hit one individually. Okay. And when you're done, just take the pencil with the eraser, just give it a little bit of a rub. Get any little loose fibers that may have come off the brush. Okay, Don't do what I just did. I just did it to get the stuff off. If you've got like a toothbrush, use that to get the debris off. Don't rub your finger across it because what ends up happening is the oils and the dirt from your fingers ends up on the terminal. So after you're done doing this and after you're done doing this, just take like a toothbrush or something and just brush it off. As a matter of fact, I've got a brush right here that I'm going to get. Okay, so if I were just to be done right there, give it a little bit of a brush. And then, 
first things first, put that plastic back on. Put the game, or the ROM actually, back in its place here. It flip flops around and wants to fight. That little plastic piece has to go in where it's going to be held in place so it doesn't slide back and forth and make sure that the screw holes align. Then all that's left is take the shield and inspect the shield because sometimes I've seen rust inside the shield itself. Okay. Put your two screws back in and then you can go ahead and put your cartridge back together. It's like a like you're making a sandwich. You slide it in the front like that and then slide it. Put your two screws in and you're done. Now in the event that the screws break or you can't get them out for whatever reason, you actually can attempt to try to go in there with the Dremel. And do that. Be very careful because you don't want to eat away the plastic. You just want to get those metal contacts. Flip it over. Okay. And when you're done, if you've got an air gun or if you've got a can of air, Give it a good blasting. Okay. The electronic spray will actually spray it. You'll make good contact for a while, but my recommendation is to clean it. Okay. This particular Game Boy I got from a store, and it didn't work at all. First of all, they'd left batteries in. That's why I'm having problems with it turning on. Is I got to go in there and clean the terminals. But the contacts on the inside just did not work. That's going to be another video that I'm going to make. I'm actually going to take this apart and show you how to clean the, the terminal strips in there. But to save a little bit of time, what I did is I just gave it a, a little spurts. It's very cold when it comes out. It's alcohol-based. It will evaporate, so don't turn the device on until you can feel that it's evaporated and gone. Okay, no liquid comes out of it. Okay, when you're done, you can go ahead and turn it on. Especially designed so it doesn't short out any of the components. This particular one, I've already cleaned it, but because I had a battery explode in there, you can probably tell that this one terminal is black. Okay. I can also use the Dremel on it. Being very careful not to jam it in there because what's going to end up happening is, is this will wrap around that and you'll rip it right off. If there's a whole lot of corrosion and you see that this is like really, really rusted, be careful because it'll pop off on its own and then you really got yourself into a pickle. Yeah. Alright, so I just gave it a clean, gave it a little spray here. Let it dry up. Like again, it's not going to hurt your components. It's designed for electronic components. Here's a game that I had earlier. This one also, Star Trek, did not work at all. I gave it a good cleaning. And it was good to go. The Nintendo games are the same. Three screws, take those off, and you're going to have the same thing. You're going to have the circuit board that you pull out, and there's also circuits on, or uh, terminal strips on the top as well as on the bottom. Same procedure. Use an eraser. If that takes care of it for you, great, leave it alone. If that doesn't work, go for the Dremel. But like I said, be very, very careful when you're going back and forth across that. You don't want to rip your terminals apart. And then the last thing that you need to make it all worthwhile is a can of cold Coke. Take a sip. Thank you, Charlie. Ah, go, ah. Take your games and go play. That's it. All right, first time